Thank you very much uh, for staying with Citizen Extra. We are in our second hour as we continue to look at news shaping the day. Um, we are going to be taking live pictures from the Wilson Airport here in Nairobi. We are expecting the NASA Brigade there ahead of a rally, a political rally in KC. Um, and we will be getting live pictures from there. Um, of course, expecting the arrival of NASA presidential candidate Raila Odinga, who earlier in the last hour we had mentioned has come out to rubbish the date that has been sent by the IEBC. Um, that's in a press release um, where um, the communique read that the IEBC will conduct a fresh presidential election on the 17th of October 2017. NASA will be um, making their way to Kissy um, today. They will be expected then as the campaign season kicks off with only 41 days to go to the fresh election following the nullification of President Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election on the 8th of August. NASA will be on the campaign trail in Gusi land. Uh, we'll be keeping you on their foray there. And we'll be looking at whether they're seeking political gain following President Kenyatta's attack on Chief Justice David Maraga over the weekend. Of course, more interestingly is what um, the NASA presidential candidate will be saying regarding IBC's naming of the election date um, where um, they have slated it on the 17th of October. That's coming up on Citizen Extra. Before that, our guests in studio this morning were joined in this hour by Javis Bigambo who is a political analyst. We are also joined in this hour once again by Eric Komolo. That's Dr. Eric Komolo, who is an assistant professor of law and an advocate of the High Court. We are also joined this morning by David Osian, who is a political analyst. And in this hour, once again, we are joined by Steve Ogola, who is a city lawyer. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. We want to talk um, election petitions. Sylvia Chabet is at the Milimani Law Court, um, where we understand the number of election losers continue to troop in um, to file their election petitions uh, ahead of tomorrow's deadline. And more people, of course, have taken their cases to court void by the Supreme Court decision to annul the August 9th presidential result. The deadline to file the petitions is tomorrow, as I earlier mentioned. I'll start with you, Steve, whether Friday's ruling will affect the judgment in any of these other petitions. Yes, it will in a very significant way, uh, because what happens in court, as you present your case, the judge that's sitting before you, that's the, the way you're sitting here in this panel, must already bring in a legal philosophy. What has changed is that before this, before the Friday's ruling, the philosophy of the court was that was a permissive philosophy that yes, we understand that errors can occur, so you must show us that those errors were so significant and insurmountable that if we leave the results as they were, it would, it would cause a great injustice. Right now, the courts are wearing, because of that ruling, they are wearing a different set of lenses, a more purposive lens or a purposive approach that requires strict fidelity to the law, meaning strict compliance. When the law has ordained a particular requirement, you must comply with the law and there is no excuse. It will be very easy in terms of now lowering the threshold for proving irregularities, illegalities and proving a case generally. Before then, a petitioner had to go an extra mile of convincing a court that wears a, a permissive lens to appreciate your case. If the court already wears a purposive lens that requires, if you just indicate to me where the falsification has occurred, I will not even go to the level of doing the quantitative analysis, which is usually shifting the numbers. I just look at, you have shown me the law is not complied with, that is enough for purpose of qualifying an election, and I think it is in that context that now there are, there's now this, uh, 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 most of the election losers are feeling rejuvenated and they're going to court to try their luck and I think there's a reasonable chance of success mm -hmm. based on the Friday ruling. And that's why people are questioning the Supreme Court's ruling and asking whether <coughs> it has lowered the threshold for nullifying an election when you see so many people, come, election losers coming out um, to contest um, the election results um, after this ruling, does then that mean that the Supreme Court has lowered the threshold? Uh, David? I don't think the Supreme Court lowered the threshold. Rather, the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court upped its threshold on fidelity and adherence to the rule of law.
that we don't want a country where you wake up one morning and do everything right and then do one thing wrong and kind of get away with it all right because if you have a glass of water and you lace it with an eighth of poison it's still poison so let's keep this as it were what is the law we agree that the law is a b c d did you adhere to that law before we even get to did the law affect the way the numbers declared did we stick to that law no we did not so shall we go back and stick to the law and that's the greatest thing the supreme court has done to try and get a lot more people to understand that the law is the law when we have a constitution and sets of laws to stick to and stick by then every one of us must attempt to stick by that law and i think the supreme court has done one of the most profound things in recent times which will shift not only the the uh, the legal you know career and and, and legislation and, uh, and 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 the work of uh, lawyers like my brother steve it as, as pertains elections but will go beyond beyond the elections people will start looking at if you have a tendering process did we get to follow the law to the letter mm -hmm. i think that's one of the greatest achievements of the supreme court and dr kamala before i come to you let's talk to javis um because he's <coughs> joining us in this hour whether friday's ruling will affect judgment of these other petitions it sure will to the extent that its reasoning and its elements will permeate and inform the thinking and considerations of uh, the benches that will be hearing various uh, election petitions. Mm -hmm. Appreciate I'll too. hold. Please hold on to that thought, um, Javas. I, I apologize for that. We're coming to you very shortly. We understand there's a press conference that's currently ongoing at the Chiromo Funeral Home. Um, this as the identification of bodies um, of the children that perished at the Moy Girls um, High School here in Nairobi continues. Let's listen in. meeting with all involved in this exercise the families uh, which has been done already and so far we have set all uh, the stands sections that are required for this exercise and uh, what is happening now uh, psych psychosocial support and counseling services are going on and from there I see that the families require to be given support so they can withstand to see uh, the bodies of their beloved ones. We have also agreed that it is important uh, to allow the families to view the nine bodies of the students. So uh, at uh, this time also uh, viewing is taking place uh, whereby uh, the bodies have been kept aligned somewhere for the families to get satisfied if they can have uh, a view and see if they can do an identification prior to the real exercise of post-mortem sampling. Uh, so far, DNA sampling uh, is being done and is to the mother, father, sister, brother who are present here for this exercise. And the way it has been explained, it will be done, but the process to get results may take longer as it requires a systematic approach, scientific, to get the real results, it will not be hurriedly done. Uh, and uh, after a result will be found, the government chemists have explained very well that they'll be giving any results as they get them uh, uh, as needed for the public to know. Uh, after viewing, we have also aligned the uh, postmortem process whereby the government pathologist has organized for three stands. The three uh, stands are uh, inside there whereby each stand will have the following. We'll have uh, one, uh, a pathologist working alongside the, uh, the scenes of crime personnel, uh, an investigation officer, and we'll have also uh, the government chemist taking samples and uh, a mortician. Uh, thereafter, uh, having done so, later on, we'll have what we call a debrief for those families which will have uh, still within this, uh, premi uh, this premises. Otherwise, uh, as you have been advised that uh, DNA sampling is a process which takes a, a bit of time, uh, we advise those parents and families that once your samples have been taken, you may live at your own pleasure and wait for results. 
But if you may want to get a debrief from the pathologist, he'll do it after uh, the process. And we cannot say what time because the process takes a bit of time because different parties are deformed differently and require, require different examination uh, and different samples, which we cannot say it will be what time, but that will come later after the whole exercise has been done. But indeed, I believe the process of DNA sampling and postmortem will be ready by today. We have also the, the scenes of crime personnel and uh, the detectives from the CID. They will be recording statements from the close relatives who will be identifying the victim saying who, uh, whom they are looking for, uh, the relationship and their, what they, they have in terms of recording uh, for that person. Nasema hivi kwa luka ya kiswahili, sisi tuko hapa, vile tulisema kwa siku ya leo, tutakuwa na mpangilio malum ya kufanya DNA sampling na postmortem na kweli wazazi wote wamefika wako hapa, na subuhi wa leo tumefanya mkutano. Um, we were getting that link from the Chiromo Funeral Parlor, not the Chiromo Funeral Home as Elia mentioned, that is the Chiromo Funeral Parlor and um, of course that is as um, identifying of bodies through a DNA um, exercise um, goes on there. Um, you do remember that only this weekend um, there was a fire at the Moy Girls High School here in Nairobi as questions and theories on what exactly caused the fire continue, parents continue to identify the bodies of their children there ahead of burial plans and will be staying with that developing story. Back here in studio, we're talking election petitions as we see election losers move um, to file their petitions. Javas, um, before we took that uh, link from the Chiromo Funeral Parlor, you were talking about Friday's ruling and its consequences on yes. the other petitions. So it will permit and inform the reasoning of these other lower courts and it can no more be disputed about the significance of the Supreme Court ruling appreciating that it's the highest court on the land and as we await the ruling you know the whole the whole ruling in totality on 21st we'll begin to look at the ratio and uh, also appreciating uh, the Australian uh, you know court ruling that annulled as well their presidential elections and now this and taking note that in matters in commonwealth jurisprudence the place of precedence is crucial and especially when it's been determined by a higher court we know very well that these lower courts are going to be informed by uh, the ruling of the supreme court take note too of what justice marada indicated as what will be in my consideration the backbone of this supreme court ruling when we look at the entire ruling on 21st that the place of the rule of law and the significance of the constitution will be something that every uh, court will want to tether itself to and yes there is the place of incontrovertible evidence that needs to be adduced but also looking at how the place of law breathes itself in the evidence adduced will be very very significant mm -hmm. and also these petitioners should not only uh, you know, depend wholesomely on the Supreme Court ruling, the evidence that they will have to gather and adduce in court will have a bearing on the weight of their, of their matters before court. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Komolo, yes. what are these petitions offer renewed hope to election losers and particularly, just borrowing from what Javas has said, when you talk about evidence, whether the threshold pro for proving um, any of these election losers cases have been thus lowered? You know, Lilian, it's very difficult to dispute the contribution, the impact of this uh, petition and the decision on generally management of elections in Kenya and in Africa. But I'll be reluctant, like my colleagues here, I'll be reluctant to celebrate until I see the philosophical reasoning. Uh, the, the deeper details. Oh, no, I doubt they're celebrating. The deeper reasoning that, that informed the judges. Uh, Dr. Komolo, once again, just like uh, Javas, um, I'm going to have to stop you at that. Um, we're coming back, but not on a light note. Serious matters here. So um, let's cross over to the Wilson Airport, where NASA presidential candidate Raila Odinga is currently addressing um, the press. Let's listen in. 
elections and uh, the announcement by the IEBC yesterday that uh, the presidential elections are going to be held on the 17th of next month. And they're saying that uh, the Supreme Court declared uh, these presidential elections invalid, null and void. Therefore they say that uh, fresh ele elections should be held. This is not a, r a runoff. A runoff is held when no candidate attends 50 plus 1. Then number 1 and number 2 then go into a runoff. This is not a runoff. This is a repeat of a presidential elections because what ha happened was nullified by the court order. And therefore, any other Kenyan eligible to run can run. That's number one. And therefore, that declaration by the Electoral Commission is itself null and void. And then the Electoral Commission did not see it fit to consult the stakeholders before they announced the date of the elections. We found this is a contemptuous action because earlier on the Commission had sent a message to us informing us that they wanted to have consultation with us and Jubilee so that we could agree on not only the date of elections and how the elections are going to be conducted. That did not happen. We get Mr. Matiani announced that they recommending that elections be held by 17th of October because of the pending uh, exams in schools. So it is to believe it therefore decided on the date not the Electoral Commission. It put to question the independence of the Electoral Commission. Now, the court orders, the, the contempt of uh, Supreme Court orders have not been paid. Uh, this required an open audit uh, of the ICT infrastructure of the uh, IEBC. That was not done. Then, number four, the French company, Sopran, should give full account uh, of uh, what actually transpired. We have said that the French government ought to carry out investigations of this Sopran company. It provided the Kim system that was used, which failed. Because we can see the court order was not honored by the IBC. They did not even allow us to access the servers uh, uh, of the IBC. Five. Uh, basically, by law, the technology system that is being used by the IBC should be accessible by law to everyone, all the stakeholders, including servers and also transaction logs. Six, the commission, uh, uh, the, 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 the commission, as it is currently constituted, should not conduct this election because the commission itself is has been indicted. The commission has been found to be very wanting in terms of their conduct of these just concluded elections. So therefore, we are saying that uh, a number of the officials of the commission should be sent home. Some of them should be investigated and prosecuted for the kind of heinous crime that they committed in these last elections.
the names are known, you mention some of the names and you find the names in the statement which we are going to give you now. You say that these officials should not conduct elections. And therefore, we are saying that we are not ready to participate in elections on the 17th of October without legal and constitutional guarantees. Because if we not do a mistake twice and accept, expect to get different results. We know exactly what transpired in these last elections. We know what the IBC did. And we know that if we were to go back, there will be no different results. And that's why we will say that there will be no elections on the 17th of October until some of the conditions which you have spelled out in the statement are met by the IBC. You have written a letter also to the IBC stating out clearly what we have also stated in the statement which we are going to give you right now. This is our position in regards to what uh, was announced by the IBC yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Kennedy Murray from NTV and I have two questions. Number one, with regards to it not being a runoff and uh, being fresh elections, the 2013 Supreme Court ruling had actually expressed itself on the fact that only the people who petitioned and the other one will be involved in the elections. Are you also challenging that fact? And number three, when is the most probable time that Kenyans can have elections? Do you remember that it is stipulated that it should be within 60 days? Mm -hmm. When should we be having that election according to you? Number one, you talk about the 20, 2013. Really, there is no relevance between 2013 and 2017. Uh, in 2013, you remember, the Supreme Court did not look at the evidence we provided on the ground that uh, it was fired late. At this time, the Supreme Court had the opportunity to look at the evidence which we tabled before it. And on the basis of that evidence, the court ruled that there were no elections. Or if there were, said those elections were not conducted in accordance with the provisions of our Constitution. Therefore, declared them null and void. What does that mean? It means that the elections need to be repeated, not a runoff. The entire election was cancelled by the, by, the, by the Supreme Court. So it means that you do a repeat of the presidential elections afresh. You can only have a runoff thereafter if none of the candidates obtains 15 plus 1 percent as required by the Constitution. I probably heard that uh, the Constitution is supreme, Kennedy. Right? The IBC should have uh, looked at the provisions of Article 140, right? And not to look at uh, the 2013 judgment. And you know the Constitution, it says that it is supreme. And anything else, including judgments of 2013 that are inconsistent with the expressed provisions of the Constitution, are void to the extent of that inconsistency. So this is again, we repeat, we reiterate, very simply seen not as a runoff, but a fresh election. With regards to the date, yes. what will be the most probable? The court said that uh, the election should be held within uh, 60 days. And now, as far as we are concerned, it is not just not the date, the day, it is the preparations for these elections. Uh, which is more, more important to us, that uh, there must be proper preparations. We must deal with uh, all the irregularities which were committed, beginning with the people who committed them and also rectifying those irregularities. One was, you know, in terms of trans, um, transmission, not, there was no problem at the polling station, the counting but we had a problem with the transmission of results from the polling station to the constituency telling center and to the national telling center. And then the other one is from the constituency telling center to the national telling center. Those days where there was a problem, that is from 34 A's and 34 B's. Um, and then the, there was also a, a, a problem uh, in terms of the 
personnel who are employed to conduct these elections and as presiding officers, as returning officers, and some of them are the national turning center. So we want all that to be investigated and remedial action taken so that these same people who committed this crime are not allowed to be in charge of these press elections. So we said our view we had proposed we had, if we had a meeting we we're going to propose to them 24th or 31st of October but that is subject to those conditions being met. Also with the fact in your earlier statements you've mentioned some commissioners that uh, it is actually tedious it will require parliament to remove some of these commissioners. Are you going to revise that list or do you insist that some of these commissioners should also be out in your discussions? I think first of all, I think the, the, the list, the list that you have given, look at it and check whether it has the name of a commissioner. I don't think it has. No. We are aware to we are aware of that fact. That if you touch one commissioner, then the very fact of the constitution, I mean of the composition, the man of appointment, considering again, uh, just to let you know, Kennedy and friends, look at the provisions of Article I think one thirty four on what is called a temporary incubancy because there are certain things that uh, the president cannot do during this interim period so one of which will be appointment of commissioners and state other public officers so we are aware of that and we do not want to precipitate this crisis so we are restricting ourselves to the list that we have given you are you comfortable with the We, 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 we have said uh, um, that uh, the manner in which Al Gurai was appointed was very questionable, very questionable. And, and we say that we want the appointment of uh, another company to be done uh, transparently uh, in consultation with, with stakeholders. But then, what has transpired is that the forms that came from Al Gurai, which were used at the grassroots, at the polling stations, and at the constituent telling centers, had no problem. That's why the IBC was not able to bring those original forms at the Milimani court, where they were supposed to be verified. They only bought copies, copies of forms which they had themselves prepared here in Nairobi. <laughs> Those farms were printed at a certain printing farm on Mombasa Road. That's why they did not have the security features which is contained in the contract between the Al uh, Gurai and the IEBC. When you scanned, for example, the barcode, instead of showing you the constituency name and the polling station number, it was giving you a retail in France or a supermarket somewhere else. Okay? Because these things, we know where they are printed, along Mombasa Road. Uh, because the original form uh, 34 A's and B's which came from the polling station are telling a completely different story. And that's what this one here had, he also bore the same presiding officer. One person was a presiding officer in five polling stations in Bomet, three polling stations in Kericho, three polling stations in Machakos, the same person. Another one was in Meru, Raganiti, and, and Kilifi, and so on and so forth. So, they have been talking about the game of numbers. They did not dispute the numbers. What we had there was so shocking that we even didn't look at numbers, because numbers, anybody can come out with a number. It does not mean you got those numbers. The real story is there, it's true to be seen, that who did not get the so-called 8.2 million votes which Jubilee keep on talking about. You did not get those numbers. Yeah, you say that uh, Jirongo got 9 million votes. <laughs> and that's what they say, they dispute those numbers. Okay? So, um, this is a big joke. 
And therefore we have said as NASA, because we know that we have the support of the majority of the people of Kenya. We will not be pushed around with Jubilee. So this is our reducible minimum. Thank you. Sawa. The rest is in the statement. Arrest the statement. Joy from Algeria. There are people saying that people are delaying tactics from your end not to have an election. Is that true? And how do you support that view on I will really answer that question. If you have a majority, would you fear an election? And in any event, we yeah. propose the 24th or the 31st or within the 60 days expressly pronounced by the Supreme Court. Where does the delaying tactic idea come from? So I think, I think this is very clear. Yeah. Is it, uh, can be pushed. There's no, no harm in pushing the exams by two weeks. The children are not going to die. So the, the, this excuse by Matiangi that, oh, in order not to delay the exams and so on, uh, why the children are just going home for holidays. So th there's no reason why you cannot delay the exams by two weeks to conduct such an important national exercise at the election of the President of the Republic of Kenya. And besides, the besides, you don't need Jubilee's Pythagoras theorem to decipher that Matiang says in the morning that he wants elections on 17th and in the afternoon IEBC says the elections will be on 17th. I'm sure you can add it up and know who is standing behind the curtain and pressing the buttons. With, with regards to how soon do you want a meeting with the IEBC to iron out this issue, considering the uh, I mean, schedule you have? I mentioned that they had indicated they wanted to have a meeting yesterday, yesterday at, 3. at 3 p.m. and we were ready for that meeting at 3 p.m. Then they now phone and say, though, we are having internal consultations and therefore we are postponing we will let you know when the meeting is going to be held. And then later on in the evening, we hear they have now set the date for the 17th. Okay. Kwaki Swahili. Sisi kama nasa. Tumesema tuko tiari kwenda kwa marudio ya uchaguzi. Kinibili mahakama iliamua. Hii siyo mshuano baina ya namba moja na namba mbili lakini ni marudio manake mahakama ilifutulia mbali ile uchaguzi ambayo ilifanya ya bandia ya rais kwa hivyo kila mkenya wale ambayo walishiriki kama makandidate wako na jukumu uh, 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 au uh, wana uwezo wa kujiwawania tena pili tumesema Mahakama iliamua ati hili uchaguzi haikufanyika kulingana na mujibu wa kisheria na katiba wa taifa letu. Kwa hivyo tunataka wale ambao walihusika kukuvunja sheria hatua ya kisheria ichukuliwe dhidi yao. Atuwe tatwezi kukubali wale wizi wezi ambao waliiba kura wapewe fursa tena kurudia kusimamia hiyo uchaguzi. Hiyo ni kama kuchukua fisi au mchungaji wa mbuzi wetu. Wale hawezi kuchunga kura zetu. Tunasema vile vile nataka ile mitambo ambayo ilitumika kurusha matokeo kutoka kwenye vituo vya kupiga kura hadi ya kituo ya kitaifa, kituo ya constituency vile vile yaangaliwe ya kaguliwe manake mahakama yetoa uamuzi atichukubaliwe kuingia katika ile mstambo saba na tukague lakini hiyo kaguzi ilikataliwa na tume ya uchaguzi sasa vile wakili wetu alisema ikiwa kama mtu anakataa kutoa ushahidi na yeye anajua kwamba hiyo ushahidi itakuwa ni dhidi yake sisi tunasema ati ile kampuni ya Ufaransa ambayo ndiye ile mitambo 
ya kurusha matokeo ya, ya uchaguzi kutoka kwenye vituo mpaka chuo cha taifa vile vile ifanyiwe uchunguzi na serikali ya Ufaransa hiyo kampuni ambayo inaitwa Safra ya Ufaransa na uh, tuachukuliwe tena tumetaja majina ya wale maofisa wa IBC ambao tunataka kuchukuliwe hatoa kamili tumesema tuko tayari kwa uchaguzi lakini uchaguzi sio uchaguzi bandia kama ile ambayo tumetokea. Kwa hivyo tumesema hakuna uchaguzi tarehe 17 na mwezi ujao. Maana yake IBC ingeshauriana na sisi na walikataa kushauriana na sisi. Mshauriana tu na Jubilee. Na amechukua amri ya bwana Matiang kwa sababu akaweka hiyo tarehe ya 17. Tumesema mahakama ilisema siku tisaini itasikisha 60 siku 60 itaisha tarehe moja mwezi wa Novemba kwa hivyo tunaambia wachukue hatua tukae chini tukubaliane juu ya marekebisho ndio sisi tutakuwa tayari kuingia kwenye uwanja hatuogopi uchaguzi sisi tuko tayari tulikuwa tayari jana hatutaki nusu mkati hatuwezi atu, atu, kuchukua mtu mkati kutoka kwa mwezi <laughs> sisi natoka poplo yetu basi najua tulipata the NASA leadership there at the Wilson Airport as they make their way to Gusi land they'll be holding a political rally um, in Kisi today that's uh, later um, and just to recap what the NASA presidential candidate um, said there in reaction to IEBC stating the date for the fresh election on the 17th of October um, the NASA presidential candidate said that this is not a runoff this is a repeat election and therefore any Kenyan that is eligible to run can run and this this, of course, echoing the sentiments of the Third Way Alliance presidential contender, Akuru Okot, who yesterday came out to say that the other presidential candidates would be going to court um, to contest uh, this announcement by the IABC, saying that this was a null and void announcement and that they too should be given an opportunity to be um, um, on the polls that come the 17th of October on the date. Um, right, Lord Inga, they're saying the IABC did not... Uh, consult stakeholders before announcing the date of the elections and his uh, other, the other principal there, Kalonzo Musioka, saying that they have slated the date. Their proposed date should be on the 24th or the 31st of October. Um, uh, other issues that um, NASA presidential candidate Raila Odinga raised is the fact that the audit of the IBC infrastructure was not done. He talked about the French government having um, to carry out or the fact that they should carry out investigations on Safran Morpho, which is the French based firm that provided Kenya with the Kim's kit. He also talked about the fact that by law the technological system or the technology system being used by IBC should be accessible to everyone and that is not the case as of now um, and therefore some officials should be sent home um, and that NASA will not engage in this election unless they have legal and constitutional guarantees that the exercise will be carried out fairly. Um, before we get into um, re your reactions, gentlemen, on um, this presser by NASA, I believe um, when we first um, took the break, Eric, you were uh, talking to us about um, the petitions. Let's just get your summary on that before we get your reactions on this. Thanks, Lillian. Uh, uh, I, I was saying that I will be reluctant to celebrate uh, uh, the ruling as kind of earth-shaking when it comes to threshold required to, to, to file petitions and to, to adjudicate petitions. I will go into the philosophical reasoning, and I think this is the only reason why I will wait for the full judgment. When it comes to orders, declarations, and things that IBC needs to put in place to ensure that the forthcoming um, um, uh, fresh elections is uh, in, in compliance with the law, I think they don't need to wait for the ruling. When it comes to punishing 
uh, or holding accountable officers that probably are capable, and I think most of them, including commissioners, are. I don't think they need to wait for the ruling. When it comes to, to the, the, the need to wait for the full ruling, when it comes to Chebukati taking responsibility and being a little bit engaged now in terms of bringing uh, parties on board, uh, particularly the two coalitions, I don't think they need the ruling. And finally, unlike many people, I actually think that this commission can be disbanded. I think through a bipartisan political agreement we can fast track the process. I think that we do, it's not cast on hard stone that the current commission has to hold elections. Mm -hmm. But if I were to do a legal opinion, so I will go for first, disband it. Two, if that is not possible or it will protect things, <coughs> then the commission must come up with a mechanism of ensuring that in all their decision-making processes there is substantive representation. That is not to take away the independence. Substantive representation of both NASA and, and Jubilee. If they don't do that, I see another petition. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 very quickly, if you want to, because we need to talk about um, these reactions from NASA, I see you want to respond to um, what Eric is saying. Yeah, and the thing is this, uh, sorry to my learned colleague. You can't disband IDC within the time frame allowable for a pre election. You may wish to disband it. The challenges are real. The process of getting new commissioners will go beyond the 60 days. Mm -hmm. I would privilege an approach that requires innovation within the challenges. If we take the Chief Justice Maraga's preambular quote mm -hmm. before he issued the declarations. He said, election is a process, not an event, respect for the rule of law, and above all, the fear of God. If we take that preambular quote as the organizing principle through which to deal with the processual issues, you'll realize that what IBC needs to do and all political actors need to do is to isolate step by step what needs to be done and how to have a more consultative, inclusive and participatory approach. Mm -hmm. That is the approach the Constitution has ordained. And when we talk about so that, yeah, okay. If you have a more inclusive, consultative, deliberative, <coughs> participatory approach, it is possible that everything that NASA is raising will mm -hmm. fall into place. And as you can see, Raila is trying to adjust the date by just about five days, from 17th to 24th, that's about a week. It is possible to isolate all these issues of concern, areas of concern, put them on the table, IBC to communicate with clarity, have a more consultative approach, saying, listen, we are about to announce a date, and I agree with uh, uh, Eric, that, that to the extent that that date has not been gazetted. In fact, even if it was gazetted, it will be degazetted and regazetted again within the 60 days. But IBC must, at the very minimum, do two, uh, two things. Express fidelity to the law, mm. and number two, do not let the right-minded people in society, right-minded Kenyans, walk away thinking that you're biased, incompetent, <coughs> or unsuitable to hold that office or to perform those functions. They should be telling us how they are innovating within the challenges. NASA should be telling us how they intend to require IBC to innovate within the challenges. Jubilee seems to be pretty satisfied either way. Uh -huh. That is the conversation we should be having. Have we isolated the issues? Do we have a way forward? But I think attempting to disband IBC, attempting to litigate around these issues within the six-day period, mm -hmm. will not only jeopardize the final outcome because the election anyway, sadly, Lillian, uh -huh. there is no provision for extension of this election beyond the 60 days. That would require a constitutional amendment. If you delay the process and the election is had, let's say, on the 30th of October by a new commissioner or a, a commission that is ill-prepared, you, you, you have an election which again will not meet the requirement, the minimum requirement in the constitution and then you just have the opportunity again of returning back to court. Can we then have a shared and settled approach? What is important? What is a, a priority list? Mm -hmm. How can we communicate on those issues? How do we build consensus? How do we move forward knowing too well that the issues that needed to be attended to have been attended to. And I had a, um, a journalist there actually point out to NASA that um, there seems to be a, a feeling that they're trying to buy time when you alter the dates um, to about seven or ten days because they gave um, their proposed dates as the 24th or the 31st of October. What really um, changes can be effected um, within this time frame? They're giving their proposals um, as about ten days um, to, I mean, ten days after what the IBC has said should ideally be 
the date when the fresh election will be held will be held i'll get your parting remarks as we close this topic all of you gentlemen on nasa's remarks uh, they're saying this is not a runoff um, like i said so therefore um accommodating the other presidential candidates that um took part in the other election and then also talking about some of the um systematic issues within the IABC, talking about um, the current secretariat as it stands, but also pointing out that they shall not touch or they shall not um, in any way go at it at any of the commissioners. Mm -hmm. well. IABC has perfected the art of shooting itself in the foot, Lily, and I find it most unfortunate that foremost, IABC that has a legal department whose CEO is a lawyer and whose chair is a lawyer of no mean repute, would first decide that the new election, the fresh election, not a rerun, will be between two candidates. And Raila has said as much. A Kuro court has clarified as much. So if uh, Torre, Chiloba, and Chebukati could, could not deal with this, even with their legal knowledge, and just let it be what it ought to be, a fresh election, that would be unfortunate. Now, come to the second beat of them not consulting. All right? All of us saw that Matiani suggested, and it was not... It was not a weird suggestion, okay? He suggested let's have the election before the 17th. Rail Odinga says these people told us they will consult us and never got back to us. And he says if our opinion had been sought, we would land for the 24th or the 31st. They actually have a middle ground, which is the 24th. If 31st seems to be far way off. The, the excuse being that we have examinations and for some reason we want to believe that these exams are too important more than the will of Kenyans. I find but that... But they are, I mean you cannot also discredit the fact that they are, they are important, David. No, 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 they are important but not important than the election. I must be very clear about that. The exams are very important for this country but the election is much more important than the examinations. If the election can be moved to a different day, then certainly the exams can take a hit. They cannot decide that our data has been set and we stand on this. Now finally, uh, we need to understand and, and um, uh, Dr. Komolo, the doctor of law says he doesn't see anything new about raising the bar in this ruling. Two things have happened that with this ruling having been done, with the new petition, we've ended up establishing that there are two things that would happen if people sought to nullify presidential uh, results. The first was the 2013 case in which the argument was that we, the person or the contender did not meet the threshold, the 50% plus one. Mm -hmm. The new ruling, however, says that's something entirely different. We are not even go f going to go for the numbers, Dr. Komolo. It is that the dictates as embedded in the Constitution and in law were not followed. So, so far we have established that there are two instances in which presidential elections could be annulled. And we could even have a third one. And that, I think, is something worth noting. That's quite progressive. Mm -hmm. It's progressive not only for the electoral management laws, but for the other laws, so that we do not have lackluster you know, kind of litigation where people and judges will find a lacuna and find it, uh, you know, quite useful to twist things and say, this is sensible. However, the law was not followed, but it would not have really changed this. It's that fidelity to the rule of law, the adherence to the Constitution, and I by all means think that's been greatly progressive. Well, uh, these are times that are trying the soul of this nation. And we know very well that to move from the kind of quagmire that we are in, a few things are needed. One, sufficient and appropriate goodwill by all parties, especially politicians. Two, fair-mindedness on the part of all stakeholders. The law is not at issue. We know that the minds of men and women is what is at issue now. And when I talk about the fair-mindedness, when I talk about the goodwill, it is important that... IEBC, knowing that it played a role in bungling the election on the 8th of August, knowing very well that it is the future of this country at stake by such kind of bad behavior that now has been reprimanded by the court, it is proper that Jubilee, IEBC, and having the will of Kenyans, the support of Kenyans, now together with NASA, get to agree that yes this election is important uh, we've heard and read what Matiangi has said exams are national and so are the elections then now let each party not stick to their guns 
let each party not adopt the hard stances. So it is important moving forward that then we move to that middle position. We can have the election on 24th, but then let, ha let us have the Ministry of Education under the guidance of Matiangi appreciate that what is it then that we can do logistically to shift this election? Because what we want to do is for the greater good. And the other thing is this. Let us also not be too skeptical. Much as I know that skepticism helps us to become more prudent and answer certain questions. But let the goodwill, especially on the part of Jubilee, and goodwill on the part of NASA, be sufficient to take this country forward. And finally, L Dr. Kamolo. Lillian, only two things. First, I agree with all my brothers that this petition is progressive and that it might contribute to growth of jurisprudence in Kenya and in Africa. And there's no doubt about the fact that it has introduced new levels uh, when it comes to invalidating presidential or other levels of elections. The bigger question here is the reasoning that the judges will apply. And that's what I'm waiting for. And then we see how, whether their reasoning can stand. Because, you know, the 2013 uh, one also had some reasoning which has been uh, questioned. Two, removal of commissioners is a question of Article 250 of the Constitution. It's only in Kenya and Africa that people still don't take responsibility. If yeah. I watch Iloba, for example, mm -hmm. I don't have to wait. I am a young man. Yeah. I'm a professor of law. I don't have to be chief executive of IABC. So long as people question my integrity, I'll move on. I'll still teach in university or maybe run for elections <laughs> uh, as others have done. So it's only in Africa that people still wait to be hounded out of office. Chebukati has done literally everything that needs him to be out of office. He's declared results based on Form 34C. That is wrong. Is is literally is literally in contempt of court by not allowing because he's at the head of the and commission. And yet he that came out very strongly to say um, that there was nowhere in the ruling um, that his the, name was. There is only one head of IBC. There is only one head of IBC, and it is clear that he declared result based on Form 34C. Mm -hmm. Two, it's also clear that uh, he needs to lead the commission going forward in a manner that is inclusive. Remember, they are in contempt of court. So if somebody were to move uh, quantum court proceedings, yeah. they'll be found culpable. So unlike my brother here, I am very sure that these people can be removed out of office, can be moved from office within 30, within I mean one week. Alternatively, they can resign and we have another commission. Uh, yeah, he says it's not constitutionally yeah. possible. Yeah. Um, it is. But then again, yeah. the yeah. two of you, yeah. you, yeah. Are, yeah. Yeah. you yeah. go at this forever. Let me just clarify this, Lillian. Let me just ask a question. We must close. What happens if, like Musando Chebukati, were to drop dead today? We will not have an election. We will have a replacement and we will have an election. That's an and so actually, exactly no, 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 it is exactly unfortunate, but this unfortunate thing happened to Musando. Now, what I'm saying here is this, mm -hmm. Lillian, that I would appreciate if Chiloba uh, and the commissioners and the people yeah. mentioned in only doing their part, honorably doing their part, whether or not they were involved. We must close. We're getting paid. <laughs> and that would be the only... I, think, I really appreciate no. if they must would close. Close, gentlemen. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. <laughs> I think uh, I've been able to distill four issues. Uh, imagine from now the, the discourse out there, whether the first election is open to all. That's an issue that if there's doubt and IBC is able to, is able to build consensus, it can seek an advisory opinion. The second issue, whether Algoria should, should paint the ballot paper, that can be solved by consensus. The third issue, whether election date is, uh, is convenient to all, again, that can be solved by consensus. Whether IBC is as presently constituted, should manage the election, so both political and legal questions, that can also be resolved by consensus. Mm -hmm. So I believe now if there's, if there's a room for dialogue, all these issues, although they are legal, some of them are political in nature, a consultative, a consultative approach mm -hmm. can actually resolve them, not litigation and right. not brinkmanship. Okay, and I thank you so much for your time. Gentlemen, we've been talking to City Steve. <laughs> yes, because he, you, you, he, he no, refers no, to no. himself as a city-based lawyer. So this is Steve Ogola. Uh, we were also joined by David Osiani, who is a political analyst. Also with us is Dr. Eric Komolo, who is an assistant professor of law and an advocate of the High Court, and Javas Bigambo, also a political analyst. Thank, Thank you very much, gentlemen. Before um, we take a very short break, we'll be leaving you with live pictures uh, from Kisi. Um, yes. Okay, I beg your pardon. Um, we are going to be joining Sam Ogina.
who is in KC. Yes, that's correct. Who is in KC, um, of course, awaiting the arrival of the NASA brigade as they make their way there uh, for political campaigns. Some, the mood on the ground, um, the people there um, as they await the arrival of NASA presidential candidate um, Rai Laudinga, who is uh, flanked by the other principals. At least we saw James Orengo, we saw uh, Kalonzo Musioka, we also saw uh, Wetangula um, with him at the Wilson Airport. What are the people on the ground saying and what are we expecting um, to hear uh, the NASA principals and the NASA brigade uh, address today? Uh, well, Lillian, coming to you from uh, the heart of Nyamira County in Nyamira Town, where uh, NASA principals, of course, are expected to land any moment from now and not far away from here. And that is just uh, the highway that uh, uh, is leading into Nyamira Town. And, of course, as you said, it is, of course, the second time that uh, the opposition is now making stories in this particular region. And to begin with, actually, when they begin uh, the official campaign, they're beginning it from Nyamira uh, County now. As uh, you exactly asked about the mood and the feel of the people here in Nyamira County, given that, remember, uh, that uh, uh, that is the Chief Justice David Maraga actually hailed from this particular county, and uh, given that the ruling that he delivered uh, annulling the presidential election results, uh, that is the re-election of President Uhuru Kenyatta, and the subsequent attacks that he has received uh, for that particular decision, while well, residents uh, from this particular area are of the opinion that uh, uh, given whatever that he did, he did out of the wisdom that he had and of course backed by uh, the instruments of law, uh, that is the constitution and of course uh, the legal, uh, of course other rec legal requirements as it were and thereby he is not supposed to be vilified as it were, uh, but uh, of course uh, given what we've seen uh, in the in the public domain, the Jubilee administration uh, going berserk, attacking uh, the, uh, the Supreme Court judges uh, and of, of course uh, uh, the Chief Justice as it were. And probably that has informed even uh, the opposition to come and start their campaigns here in uh, uh, Nyamira County. I uh, remember that in, uh, in the just concluded uh, August 8th presidential election, the results that were annulled, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta actually managed to get 101,000 votes from this particular region. And, uh, uh, Ray Lodinga uh, managing 90,000, that is like 46% of the vote that was actually cast here uh, in Nyamira County and uh, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta with 101,000 uh, votes, uh, that makes it 52%. But when you look in retrospect uh, what happened in 2013, it was actually Ray Lodinga's stronghold, that is Nyamira County, uh, whereby uh, he got almost 56% uh, of the vote then. And of course, when you look at uh, the larger Gusi uh, land region, uh, when you look at uh, Kisi, uh, Ray Lodinga managed 190 uh, in this particular election against President Uhuru Kenyatta, 150,000 uh, 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 ballots cast in his favor. And probably uh, Ray Lodinga and his uh, entourage will be coming here now to try and buttress and also try and probably and uh, undo what was done uh, in the August 8th uh, uh, presidential election. Of course, uh, what was done here, given that uh, uh, also the, uh, the acting interior cabinet secretary, that is Fred Matiangi, who is also the education minister, uh, campaigned heavily for the Jubilee administration here uh, in the run-up to that uh, exercise. Of course, President Uhuru Kenyatta, William Bruto, making several forays in this particular region, uh, managing also to get uh, at least two MPs out of the four in this particular county alone, and that is uh, Kitutu, Masaba, and North Mugirango out of the four constituencies. They manage at least two members of parliament. So essentially what the opposition will be coming here to do is to uh, try and uh, undo what was done in the August 8th election, try and uh, try and uh, actually uh, regain the lost ground and foothold that they had uh, in 2013. And also this particular region uh, predominantly being called an opposition stronghold as it was so those are uh, just some of the aspects that we will be watching out from the opposition as they uh, begin their campaign of Gusiland region uh, that is uh, Nyamira and Kisi and of course they will be starting here in Nyamira town uh, go to Karoka and uh, wind up uh, their two county tour uh, at Gusi stadium in Kisi back to you Lillian at the communication center
Thanks for that. Sam Ogina is not yet in Kisi. He's actually in Nyamira County. The NASA Brigade will be making their way um, to Kisi later on in the day after starting off um, their campaign tour in Nyamira. Um, and Sam Ogina will be staying with that uh, story. Um, of course, he'll be giving us um, a more detailed report in subsequent bulletins. For now, we shift gears to the questions and theories on what exactly caused the fire at Moy Girls High School here in Nairobi. Those questions have arisen as investigations point to arson as the most probable cause of the fire. With me in studio very shortly after the break, I'll be having this discussion with Janet Mudoni Ouko, who is the National Coordinator Elimu Yeto Coalition. Janet will be talking to you very shortly. Um, and of course, we are staying with Citizen Extra as we come to the top of the hour. Stay tuned. We'll be back very shortly.